One question I get a lot is why haven't I made a Raspberry Pi video in a while? More to the point is why haven't I talked about the Raspberry Pi 4 since its release? The truth of the matter is I still have a tremendous love affair with the Raspberry Pi. I use them often and as a single board computer, they're phenomenal. But the reason why the Raspberry Pi 4 has kind of slipped under my radar is because my absolute favorite use of the Raspberry Pi was as a retro gaming emulation console. When the Raspberry Pi 3 came out, it was my absolute favorite way to emulate retro games, which is why every chance I got, I tried to talk about it in a retro gaming sense. In the last few years, we've seen the market become saturated with a ton of handhelds, home consoles, and even other tinker boards that are all just as capable as the Raspberry Pi. So while although the Raspberry Pi is still one of my top five favorite ways to play retro emulation, it's not my absolute favorite which is why it took me a while to get around to the Raspberry Pi 4. The Raspberry Pi 4 is a bit interesting because it comes in multiple configurations. The one I have in front of me is a kit that I purchased for a little bit over $100 and comes with 8GB of RAM. They also come with 4GB as well as 2GB, but because I wanted to test this thing out to the fullest of its capabilities, I went for broke and just got the 8GB model. These things can get pretty hot especially when running some more resource heavy emulation. So this kit came with a couple of heat sinks, a cooling fan, and a neat little case. So I feel like it was worth it. Installing RetroPie is easier than ever before. It took me a little under 30 minutes to get a fully operational Pi. I'll put a link to the whole installation process in the description. Since I already know this thing has more than enough power to run all of your 8-bit and 16-bit emulation with ease, I'm going to start with PlayStation and work my way up. Right here I'm playing Tekken 3 and it's running at full speed with no problems. Switching gears over to N64, it didn't seem to have any problems playing Super Smash Bros. Playing Mario Kart 64 ran really good as well. Where I started to encounter issues was while trying to play Killer Instinct Gold. Out of all the N64 games I tried, this was the only one that gave me problems. In this state, it's definitely not the most fun way to play this game. Moving over to the Sega Dreamcast, here I am playing Crazy Taxi 2 and it's running it no problems. Capcom vs SNK2 is one of my favorite 2D fighters from this era, and it's running it perfectly. I'm sure everyone's sick of seeing this game whenever someone emulates Dreamcast, but Ikuraga is such a badass game, man. How can you not want to play it? This one was a little bit of a surprise, I was expecting it to run a little choppy, but Dead or Alive runs really good on the Pi 4. Now moving over to the PlayStation Portable. Here I am playing Tekken 6, and the Pi 4 doesn't seem to have any problems handling it. Here's Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories. The game seems to run at a pretty good speed. It has a couple of slowdown moments and some pretty nasty hiccups in terms of audio, but the game is actually playable. Here's a throwback from the PS2 era. I'm playing a port of the Warriors that came out for the PSP. In my opinion, one of the most underappreciated Rockstar games, and it ran a little choppy initially, but once I tweaked a couple of the settings, specifically with frame skip, it ran much, much better. If you've never played this game 100%, please check it out. So the Raspberry Pi 4 as a retro gaming console. As expected guys, this thing is a absolute beast. And to this day is still one of the best ways to play retro emulation. I can't say enough good things about it. And if you guys never tinkered with one of these, I think now would be a good time. 
I'll put a link to the kit that I purchased and a couple of other goodies in the description below. Until next time, this is Ness, signing out.